Ambassadors, dear friends, as I stand here in front of you, I take full measure of how my visit is part of a century-old history that has created a true community of destiny between our countries, a dialogue that goes back to the dawns of memory. It is impossible to list all the emissaries that have been sent across the Mediterranean since the Renaissance, the history of explorations and the various uh, stories, including that of an envoy sent to Versailles centuries ago, or that of Indris and Morawi, who brought back to Sultan IV uh, his tales of France uh, in the 17th century. There were embassies over the years that were uh, dealt with issues on the Mediterranean uh, uh, situation. But it were artists who painted pictures of Morocco, such as Delacroix, Matisse, and Majorelle, and this whole cohort of traveling painters that always depicted the country with respect and admiration. And so it is in line with them that we continue our work today, and they shed a light on our common memory. Because there were unequal and unfair treaties linked to uh, European colonial conquest over the four corners of the world, and Morocco did not escape the violence of colonial history. France had created commercial and financial treaties, including that of Fez, and imposed its views and consolidated its interests on the country. But there were also men who tried to understand and to respect and also perhaps love this uh, millinery empire, which they saw the profound identity of. People like Massignon, Jacques Berquin, and Hubert Lyoté. But the Republic was blind to the renewal that was being felt by the Moroccan youth and that uh, Mohammed V would soon defend. Following the First World War, these pioneers created the France Maghreb Committee, of which François Mauriac was a part of, as well as François Mitterrand. And they supported the renewal of conscience and the emancipation of the Moroccan people. History also remembers the courage of Moroc press and Antoine Mazera, who in 1954 called for the return of the Sultan exiled in Madagascar, and all the liberal thinkers who would pave the path of the future for the country. These liberal politicians brought together at the center of French conscience uh, around Jean Vedrine would lay the foundations for the future and the agreements of Aix-les-Bains. But it would take more local representatives and representatives of Mohammed V to lead to the triumph of reason. But the declaration of Saint-Cloud in 1955 sealed a new era. And it was thanks to this that Morocco and France allowed the relations of the countries to avoid wars such as Indochina and Algeria had known. And so this opened the road to independence and allowed France and Morocco to overcome the deep wounds left by the colonial legacy.
France looks back on the 80 years of French-Moroccan relationships with gratitude, which is the main feeling we feel for all these people who came from Morocco to free our country from the occupying forces in Provence, in the Valley of the Rhone, and in the other theaters of war where the free French forces did they part. The red belts of the tirailleurs were synonyms of bravery and sacrifice. They paid a tribute of blood for our freedom, just like the General de Gaulle did by recognizing Mohammed V as a companion of the liberation, something I'm also repeated at the Necropolis of Saint Raphael this summer, where so many Moroccans lie a dead, and I wanted to express our gratitude to these fallen soldiers. There was a time for shed blood, a time for heroes in war, and then there was the era for creating peace. Tens of thousands of Moroccans contributed after the war to rebuild our country, France, and to launch its industrialization. Our capital, our regions, and our cities such as Marseille, Lyon, Toulouse, Le Havre, Lille, Metz, Nantes, Grenoble, so many places who bear witness to this legacy through the communities stemming from Morocco who live there and who are part of the vital force of 21st century France. How many entrepreneurs, artists, sportsmen and women carry the spiritual values and legacy of what Morocco brought to France in order to make it what it is today. Here, in Morocco, France has since independence been a faithful companion of the Moroccan society in its evolution. Morocco is the most important partner in Africa and we have 44 schools with almost 50, with over 50,000 students. And throughout the kingdom, our French institutes host all the people who, in one way or another, are looking for different perspectives to learn our language, to prepare to study in France. The Moroccan student community is the most important one in the French mainland. And I also can uh, uh, cite the thousands of French tourists who travel to Morocco every year. So when we speak of Morocco on either side of the Mediterranean, we must say that we are not strangers to one another. And not just for the region that uh, the southern part of France is a place of exchange with your country. There are many architectural vestiges that bear witness to our relationship, but our very poets have placed Morocco at the heart of our collective imaginary. There is a passion between the two countries that is still fresh today. And the space in southern Europe is not entirely part of Africa or Europe. But as Louis Aragon stated, everything, the cities and people of these places, speaks of this country of gold and silver. And so Morocco will always have a special place as a door to Africa, to a dreamt of Africa, as well as a tangible human and real Africa. And so our French readers also read so many great Moroccan writers, such as Taha Ben Jaloun, Leila Slimani, among others, authors who have won our greatest uh, prizes, such as the Prix Goncourt, because your country is also one of literature, and the Moroccan reality is so complex and so rich and so contradictory in many ways that it is a rich uh, 
a, a rich land for literary creativity, and it has nourished many a pen. And so with Mohammed VI, we have decided to write a new book together. And I would like to share with you the certainty I have that our relationship will grow stronger and do so incessantly. And I'd like to thank the king for the words that he stated here on the 11th October about France. Among, it is among the oldest monarchies in the world, and the, French, the Moroccan kingdom walks forward with confidence. It is confident because of its long history and its great and numerous youth that fully espouses the progress of the country. You are the representatives of the country that, thanks to its sovereign, has highlighted diversity, tolerance, and dialogue, and has placed these values at the heart of its identity, of its institutions and constitution. A tolerant Islam that is promoted by His Majesty the King, the commander of the faithful, challenges all forms of extremism. This is one of the treasures of Morocco that is worthy of our respect at a time when our world is torn apart by intolerance and war. And these are values that France shares deeply and also strives to promote as pillars of the EU, as a determined actor on the international stage, and also as being a heartland of innovation, thanks to all of those that built our uh, nations. 25 years have passed since King Mohammed VI uh, acceded to the throne. He is in the continuity of one of the oldest dynasties in the world and also incarnates the modernity of technology. We see the next 25 years as a time of every possibility. And so I take this opportunity to turn this new page and write this new book in order to meet the challenges of this new century. It is a historical opportunity and it is also a strategic duty in order to build something between our two countries and also between the EU and Maghreb and and Africa beyond to create a project that will give our economies and our people the possibility of a new horizon of prosperity and newness. Much has been said these last years, much has been drafted in terms of initiatives these last years, but all these promises did not bear fruit because of the difficulties in the eastern Mediterranean of what happened in Libya and the consequences that this had in the Sahel and North Africa. And so there must be a time for new hope and responsibilities. France wants to create a, a new reinforced exceptional partnership between our two countries in order to give the generations of the next 25 years this new, lucid, clear-sighted book, clear-sighted when it comes to the past, but also turned towards the future. Of course, among above all else, it has to be an ordered space in which both partners will guarantee uh, different issues such as issues of migration and consular affairs. These are issues that necessitate uh, reciprocal responsibilities. We need to have greater results in these fields. I'm also thinking of our partnership when it comes to 
the security and the fight against all illicit trafficking that undermine our states and societies. The fight against terrorism also has to ceaselessly unite us. The fight against organized crime and especially uh, narco uh, trafficking, which is a gangrene that runs through our countries. And this calls for closer cooperation because it is together that we will be able to build a space that we are masters of, a space of security and safety. It is thanks to these actions that this exceptional partnership will be able to work together over months and years to create a space which, based on a clear ambitious framework, based on our different reciprocal ro rules, will guarantee the mobility of people and capital. And this will allow talents and projects to move between the two spaces. This will be an opportunity to give back to the Mediterranean its true place of linking two continents. If we do nothing, if we don't imagine this future, would be to resign ourselves to be passive when faced to our future. And this is not a future I want for France, because France has never been as powerful when, as when it could think beyond itself. And this is a vision that I know is shared by Morocco. France has also always stood by Morocco to support its social and economic development. I mentioned education, university education, but I'm also thinking about the very many French companies that believed in the Moroccan kingdom and have made France the first foreign investor in the country. And this influence is always growing. I'm thinking about the French Development Agency, who is the first partner Morocco in the world and whose strategy is perfectly aligned with your new model of development. I'm also thinking about the magnificent projects that you trusted France with, such as the development of the French high-speed train that we will continue working on together, and this is something that fills us with pride. I'm also thinking of our vision of the creative industries and the ambition that we share to make these a central pillar of employment for our youth. I am looking forward to have exchanges on this tomorrow and this afternoon with players from the video game industry, together with whom we will launch a, a training program in line with the ambition that Morocco has to be a major player in the video game industry. There are other sectors I could cite, infrastructures, energy, all the various sectors that are, contribute to sustainable economies in waste treatment, in uh, other industries, all these things that push our societies to do even more. Allow me to say that if there is one field that we are perhaps still opposed in, it is only that of football. Because this is a shared passion we have. And so the match in 2022 between France and Morocco was one of the highlights of the World Cup. But despite everything, we look up to your players and this is something that actually uh, brings together the uh, Olympique de Marseille and Paris Saint-Germain clubs. And I hope that Morocco hosting the World Cup in 2030 will be a success and that we will be able to participate in this and this will also fill us with exciting emotions. In all these fields, as well as many others, we have clear ambitions. We want to develop together new strategic partnerships by mobilizing all our uh, power in the fields of economy, of art, of technology, in order to do things better than yesterday. And also because I am convinced that by strengthening our community of destiny in these essential fields will allow us to 
um, guarantee our future on both sides of the Mediterranean. We will be able to meet the challenges on the international stage that is being shifted at a very fast pace. There will be no future for our children if we do not manage to make the energy transition a success and to fight climate change. No one is safe from these issues. Marrakesh, just like Paris, organized the different COPs and we played an important role on the international scene. And it is thanks to this commitment that we will succeed and we will stand by these commitments. But I'd like to mention the important issue of water and adaptation. Few countries have as ardently confronted these issues or as with much innovation as Morocco. And we are proud to be your partners in this water policy. The policies of desalinating your uh, cities uh, to confront issues linked to farming and agriculture, different issues that have to guarantee people's access to drinkable water. And Morocco has many things to teach the rest of the world. And so I hope that the uh, water highways will be at the heart of the One Water Summit that will take place soon and that we'll be able to support you on this route to adaptation. Morocco has unique resources when it comes to the energy transition. Different projects that go back to King Hassan II. There are wind farms that are among the biggest in Africa. And your country has laid the framework which will allow it to be a major player in the field of new renewables, whether it comes to electrons or green hydrogen. And I am deeply convinced that you will not only be able to decarbonate your national electricity consumption, but you will be able to also guarantee a stable and sure supply and energy to our Europe. I am convinced that the future of the Mediterranean will also be uh, written thanks to these green hydrogen and electricity corridors that will link our two countries together. And these new highways that we are building are important vectors for growth on both sides of the Mediterranean Sea. This is an essential key to our competitivity, competitiveness. And we will draw mutual, mutual benefits from these projects. We have been able to create and uh, locate critical um, energy creation spaces, which has allowed Morocco to be an important partner for French and European industry. In the uh, world, in this new world of globalization that we've been living in since this health crisis, there have been new challenges and in Integrating our value chains is an important lever that underpins our competitiveness. For France and for Europe, we need to think in a sustainable way of integrating these value chains between Europe and Africa. This is essential in order to counteract the more aggressive policies in the political stage to tariff-free measures that have been taken which other players have already enacted. These are the foundations for cooperation. They have to be clear, rational, sustainable, and fair. For French companies, this means working with Morocco. For both of our countries' benefit in the fields of services and industry, strategic sectors will be at the heart of the agreements between France and Morocco that I will sign this afternoon. And I, am, I welcome the many numerous projects that we will build together on top of the 22 agreements that we concluded yesterday. Human capital will also be the, an important lever for us to confront these different challenges. And that is why education and training and higher education is one of our main priorities when it comes to the public policies of our two countries. 
French policy is part of an ambitious francophonie, which is an extra opportunity for our youth to develop itself in this singular francophone space that represents over 250 million people today and which will grow to almost half a billion in the next generation. But we need to also have a hold of new technologies when faced with competing powers. And so, if we want to meet all the challenges that I have listed, that of competitiveness, of digital integration, of research in crucial fields such as artificial intelligence, among others, we will have to drastically invest in education and training. Our educational systems are essential and we need to reinforce strategic areas. And so we decided to, during this visit, to create new academic relationships in health, in digital spheres, in agriculture, which is so important for the food security of our country and our continents. We need to be able to train new talent. We need to be able to move this talent. We need to be able to preserve this talent. And this is a major challenge for both of our countries. And that is why our future partnership has to be respectful, but it is essential for our youth. We also need to create the foundations for the free movement of people in order to do more when it comes to building new businesses and to create new opportunities for this young talent. Uh, initiatives have been launched these last months, uh, especially for the Moroccan alumni for French un of French universities who automatically uh, receive the possibility of free movement. Uh, and I'd like to launch a pilot project to allow these alumni to be able to nourish the two sides of the Mediterranean with their knowledge and new projects. We have laid foundations for centuries, which are assets that will allow us to reach success. There will be a hope for the generations to come. Because we have to be clear-sighted and honest with ourselves. If we are not fully ambitious when it comes to the issue of our youth, we will passively be seduced by other countries that will undermine our partnership and our independence by stealing away our talent, by giving them perspectives that we will not be have been able to give them. And so what I wish for is that we write this new book of our relationship, to quote the words of His Majesty the King, something that will raise new ambitions, because beyond our two countries, this new book will also allow us to write a new page of the future, a new page of, for the development of the African continent as well. For many past decades, we have been faithful allies in troubled times. And France has never let Morocco down when it comes to various existential issues which the country had to deal with. I am alluding mainly here to the issue of Western Sahara. And in the name of France, I wanted to clearly state our vision. And I did this on the 30th of July to His Majesty the King. And I'd like to reaffirm this in front of you today. For France, the present and the future of this country is part of Moroccan sovereignty.
The autonomy under Moroccan sovereignty is the framework under which this question needs to be resolved, and the 2007 autonomy plan is the only uh, basis that will lead to a, a fair and just uh, policy negotiated on the basis of the United Nations Security Council resolutions. This will lay foundations that are promising for the future, and this is the position that France will implement in future in order to support Morocco in international fora. And I'll say here again that this is not a hostile position to anyone. This will be a new page for everyone who wants to work for regional cooperation in the Mediterranean basin with neighboring countries to Morocco and with the European Union. And I'd like to state this uh, again here, is that our players are companies will support these regions thanks to investments thanks to sustainable initiatives that will reap fruit for local populations between France and Morocco we share our history but it is also open to Europe and Africa. And I know that this is a vision that Mohammed VI, the King of Morocco, shares. We are convinced that the dialogue between our continents can open new paths, paths that are not only that of exile and escape. And I'd like to cite what he said in front of the African uh, Union that Africa is my home and my continent. And so that is why this European-African partnership is something we want to strengthen, and I strongly believe in this partnership. Everyone can see that the African continent will be where a large part of our future will play out. Yesterday's views have been outgrown. And so we now have new perspectives with which we will work with Morocco thanks to its vision of the future, the vision of its sovereign, which has for years defended the country as a platform, as a corridor for change, as a place of development, and we recognize these assets for what they are. And we believe that these values can inspire many common initiatives, and that is why I strongly believe that we can work together. And I can draw inspiration from your countries and what Morocco has done in the Sahara and in the Sahel. We need, in this region, we need stability that will respect peoples. We need projects for development for, to help the youth of these regions that will guarantee stability and put an end to the, the trafficking, to misery that, from the Gulf of Guinea to Libya, has been a scourge that has made Africa suffer. So I'm counting on this new strategy, a strategy that will allow us to work together in this region. France will humbly want to create a new strategic partnership. Some have accused us of many unjust ills, but for but many regimes have fallen in years past because of uh, various forces. But our country have contributed to the stability of the Sahel, of Mali, and other countries in the region. Our new partnership with Africa will be something that we build together. 
in Sahel, in the Sahara, but throughout the continent, thanks to education, to agriculture, to environmental projects, thanks to digitalization and energy. In these sectors, there are common projects that we can implement together, that we can build together. We can build these energy bridges that I mentioned earlier, and we can defend a policy of food safety, of food sovereignty that the continent needs, and we'll be able to discuss this more tomorrow. And we are already partners on this great adventure with the uh, Africa Soup campuses in Morocco, with the Future Academy of Water, and we are just starting these new revolutions. I also wanted to commend the positive role of the partnership that your country has created with the neighboring region. Looking towards the future of our bilateral agreements and being able to carry these ambitions for future generations, I wanted to create a new strategic framework between our countries that could be signed 70 years after the agreements of Saint-Cloud. During a visit to France by His Majesty, which His Majesty graciously accepted. With the King, we will create a monitoring committee that will draft projects starting in 2025. The Kingdom of Morocco will thus become the first country outside of the EU with which we will commit uh, to such a high level. And we will be able to remember that we are united by common values for future generations. And these ambitions will mobilize our talent and our youth so that they can be guarantors of the values that we defend and give ourselves. It will also strengthen the solidarity that brings us together and will also unite our voices on the international scene. We also look further east in the Mediterranean to that region of the Middle East that is so important to France and Morocco and that is now plunged into terrible situation with terrible consequences for civilian populations. The 7th of October 2023 was a particularly terrible attack by Hamas against Israel and its people. And Israel has the right to defend its people against such a terrible threat. France lost 48 of its children that day, and two of our fellow citizens are still among the hostages detained in Gaza. But nothing can justify the terrible suffering undergone by people in Gaza and the civilian population there. And that is why a ceasefire is needed there. And France has ceaselessly called for this ceasefire since last November, a ceasefire that is needed to liberate the hostages, to free them, to protect local populations and allow humanitarian aid to reach the Gaza Strip. The same goes for Lebanon. We need a ceasefire and a stop to military operations. And we've been working towards this goal in the past weeks together with our American counterparts and other partners. And that is why I called for ceasing the export of weapons that are now used in Gaza and Lebanon. The road of diplomacy is possible, but it is a demanding one. And that is why France needs to work to allow the Israeli, Lebanese and Palestinian people to see their freedoms and security guaranteed and allow all the populations to safely return home. You know how deeply we have historically been attached to the two-state solution. This project has to be rebuilt in order to create long-lasting peace in the Middle East. You also know how we have been unwaveringly committed to fight against anti-Semitism in France and everywhere else in the world. This commitment, this commitment is one that is steadfast. And I say this at a time when 
anti-Semitism has reared its ugly head again. And I know that this is a legacy of the kingdom that we can work together on in order to protect the cohesion of our societies and the values that we defend. This is an issue on which Morocco can teach us a lot. I'd also like to commend Mohammed Six's uh, actions, who is also the uh, head of the Al Qod committee, because he has also brought important humanitarian help to the people of Lebanon and the Gaza Strip. I'd like to commend his mobilization and that of the whole of Morocco for de-escalation, for relaunching dialogue and the credible peace process in the Middle, of, in the middle East. In the present cacophony, where we see extremism triumph, Morocco carries a singular and important voice. And I think this is the voice of reason and the voice of justice a voice that is just, faithful to its history and its principles, a voice that reminds us of our commitments and our shared values. And it should remind us constantly that of, our, of these values so that we can bring hope to these people that have so little hope today. I know that in Paris and in Rabat we share the same preoccupations and worries and that we are working towards the same goals. Dear Members of Parliament, dear friends, the clear-sighted view of Mohammed VI, the realizations, the things that he has created in the 25 first years of his reigns are things that can direct our view towards the future. And this is something that I would like to do with you. So I hope that this state visit can mark the opening of this new page of our long shared history that will allow our two nations to walk forward with determination in this uncertain century that needs to be uh, inspired by the riches of our relationship. We need to be inspired by our history for our youth. Long live the Kingdom of Morocco and long live France.